This conference will now be recorded. Yes, uh, Divakar, can you plus uh, just brief yourself? Can you hear me, Divakar? Am I audible to you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, myself, Divakar. Yeah, presently yes. I'm working as assistant professor in an engineering college. My educational background is uh, B.Tech and M.Tech in mechanical engineering. So right okay. now I'm going to change the location for working location. So that's why I choose uh, SAP MM. Okay, so how many years of teaching experience you have? Yeah, I have total years of experience, six years experience in teaching. Oh, okay, fine, that's good. Good, good, good enough. So yes, Divakar. And uh, Irfan, can you just uh, brief your, uh, give a brief introduction of yours as well? Irfan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, myself, Irfan. I uh, was uh, working as, uh, in a health department for two years. Uh, okay. My background is a basic MBA. Okay. So I, want, I want to learn about uh, SAP MM. My friend for this course. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. So, how many experience you said? How many years of experience you have? Yeah, I have two years of experience in the department. So, in the IT department, you have, uh, are you using SAP over there? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, no problem. Fine. Uh, yeah, Ifan, thank you so much. Lalit? Lalit, can you hear me? Can you just brief about yourself, Lalit? Hello, Lalit. I think uh, we'll come back on Lalit. Sachin? Sachin, can you hear me? Just unmute yourself, Sachin. Hello. And Yeah, Sachin. Can you hear me? Uh, good evening. My name is Sachin. Uh, I'm a BHA graduate. And I'm a fresher, actually. I'm studying, like, studying Sandman. So I came. OK. So what you're studying? Which... Yeah, same now. So you are a fresher into uh, what's sort of uh, qualification? Okay, okay, I'm a graduate in mechanical engineering. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Thank you. Oh, yes, thank you so much. Yeah, you're fine. And uh, next is uh, Lalit. Uh, are you? Uh, can you hear me? Am I audible to you, Lalit? Uh, Somnath. Good evening, yes, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, myself, Somnath, and uh, I'm working in uh, one of the automobile company as a German language expert since four years. And okay. I have done my uh, Bachelor of Engineering in production. OK. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, you're planning to move to SAP. Uh, any specific reason for that? from? Uh, uh, actually, I have uh, like an uh, expert in the German language, and uh, while okay. teaching, I, I used to teach German language before that. And in that, I just uh, come across to one of the uh, SAP managers from the Cognizant, and uh, he told me that it is a good combination to have a German language and the SAP. But uh, as a need of time i i joined this automobile company but now automobile sector is a bit in not in good condition actually so i, I mm -hmm. just thought to the, the sap and uh, uh, wanted to explore this area okay that's good so you have one, one added advantage of german language because of, uh, if you're going to that germany uh, german is compulsory so that's upon that if you have sap skills uh, it's a great combination yeah right, right. Fine. Thank you, uh, Somnath. And uh, Sayyad? Uh, Sayyad, can you hear me? Uh, hello, Sayyad? Sayyad, I am audible to you. I think we'll come back on that. Then uh, Vinay Gandhi? Uh, with a Vinay Grandi. Yeah, hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, currently, I'm working on SAP PM module from past okay. two years. Uh, right now, I'm looking for SAP MM module. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, so uh, PM model, how many years of experience you have? Two years, two years of experience I'm having in PM model. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh -huh. yeah. Fine, fine. Thank you so much, Vinay. And uh, uh, Lalit, am I audible to you, Lalit? Uh, Lalit, I think has a mic problem. Sayed? Hello, Sayed? Okay, I think uh, issue with the mic or something. So, no uh, problem. We'll start with the demo. I will share my screen and then I'll take it forward. Okay, so uh, before I start, let me introduce myself as well. Uh, uh, are you able to see my screen, everyone? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, well, uh, myself, Manoj Gupta, I'm a SAP MM uh, solution architect with 14 years of SAP experience, okay? And out of 14 years, uh, out of that, I have two years of S4 HANA experience and 12 years of SAP MM ECC experience. Okay, in the, my 14 years of SAP experience, I have done multiple projects. We are seven full lifecycle end to end implementation projects and 11 roller projects, which you can see it's a mini project. And then I have done two upgradation projects as well as GST migration projects with a lot of announcements and customizations. Okay, so I've also handled my project management uh, part as well with uh, wherein handling the uh, all the team members and project within the scope budget and timeline. And also ap apart from that, I've handled multiple uh, support projects using my consulting knowledge and the business expertise. Okay, so this is about uh, me. Currently, I'm working in a MNC as a solution architect, SAP, SAP S4 HANA MM. Okay. And uh, coming to who is this course for? Well, this course is basically for anyone who is uh, interested in to learn SAP MM. There is no prerequisite as such to learn for SAP MM ECC version. Yeah, you have a prerequisite for your S4 HANA version. Okay. Well, going for S4 HANA version, you have a prerequisite that you should know ECC version or uh, you should have a sourcing and procurement background. But for ECC version, there is no prerequisite as such. Uh, anybody who is a fresher, just college pass out, can learn SAP MM because, uh, as you know, we have a huge scope and job opportunities available in the SAP market. Then we have experienced candidates. Who, these are the people who are basically not necessarily they should have a SAP experience. Any domain expertise guy or uh, somebody is having a teaching experience. We have few candidates over here. So teaching experience or any domain experience they have. Uh, they want to get into SAP because they want to leverage the experience which they have uh, into the SAP. So that domain expertise, that uh, exp domain experience will be counted as a domain experience. It won't be wasted. They won't be treated as a fresher in SAP. It will be treated as a domain experience. And on the top of that, SAP skills will be an added advantage to them. Okay, and then we have uh, SAP consultants. Now uh, we have one candidate uh, from SAP PA module. Okay, so the, uh, there are candidates who are working in some other module and they want to learn extra module uh, to have an edge on other candidates for better opportunities. Because once you grow at a uh, solution architect level, uh, the way uh, solution architect needs to know multiple models. Okay, so not necessarily you should know one model so that you can uh, have a better opportunities in your organization or in the SAP market. Then we have uh, somebody as end users. So end users are the people who are already working on 
in the SAP, but as a end user, they are not working as a consultant. Uh, they are the users who using the business knowledge. They do all the processes and transactions into SAP daily day to day end to end operations are handled by the end users in into the SAP system and uh, to for better opportunities. They can learn SAP MM at consulting level and get into consulting market. Okay, as a consultant or at a team lead project manager level and this the scope is huge coming to SAP. Okay. And then uh, so this is what anybody who is interested to learn SAP MM can learn because uh, here there is no prerequisite as I said everything will be taught from the scratch. Okay, and uh, each and every topic will be covered which I will be showing you the training contents which uh, I will be uh, covering in the training. So each and everything will be covered in the training. So not only your theoretical part, it's almost for uh, 40% theory and 60% practical. This is the kind of combination. You know, in fact, more you know, practical would be more. And you'll be getting a 24 by 7 server access to practice. Okay. So after every topic which I cover, we'll be giving you assignments to work on. Uh, okay. And uh, you have to go back, practice on that assignment, come back to me on any issues or clarification doubts you have, so that you get a better clarity. And at, at the end of the training, we have a project as well. Okay, so which will give you a real time end to end uh, full life cycle project scenario. Okay, which will give you a full complete picture of SAP. How exactly it is work uh, implemented in a real life business organization. Okay, so we are not just covering the business scenarios. We would be covering the transactions and the configuration as well. So if you talk about SAP is all about the scenarios and processes. Okay, and uh, to do that processes, we have SAP transactions. Uh, there are various transactions for each processes and behind every transaction we have a configuration which is called settings so we have we have to do the settings for each and every transaction whether it's a master data or it's a transaction data every uh, process or transaction has a configuration involved in it okay so we have standard configuration and then we have a uh, specific uh, business requirement coming up so we can customize the uh, configuration as per the business requirement as well so let us start uh, now why learn why SAP? Okay, so as, as I told you and people who are into SAP uh, coming for training, they know that SAP professionals are highly sought after okay in the IT market. Okay, whether it's a low MNC company or local company and uh, if you see 76% of the world transaction revenue touches on SAP system. So whichever business organization you take uh, out of total world's transactions 76% is done in SAP system. It's a number one ERP system in the world. Okay, and uh, SAP has an enormous consumer base of 3,45,000 spread across 190 countries. So these are the companies who have implemented SAP. Okay, there are 3,45,000 companies as on 2019 who have implemented SAP. And uh, so we have huge scope. It is not local. Uh, we have global opportunities available for consulting uh, SAP consultant. Okay, SAP customers include 87% of the Forbes global 2000 companies, 98% of the world's most value brands, 100% of the Dow Jones top scoring sustainability companies. So this is the kind of scope we have when we talk about SAP. Okay, now coming to why learn SAP MM. Uh, first of all, it is easy to learn. As I told you, there is no prerequisite as such. There is no need to have a technical knowledge background. Okay, because in SAP there are uh, different modules available, uh, which I will discuss uh, how SAP is. Uh, we have uh, various components and various models in SAP. It's easy to learn, and it's a fundamental model of uh, module of SAP. Okay, so MM is one of the fundamental models. That is a core module of SAP. Apart from that, we have SD module, finance module, so and PP and QM and uh, HR. So these are the four five core modules of SAP. And every company is irrespective of the size, whether it's a small size company, big size company, or medium size company, they implement all the core models. And when these companies implement, obviously we're going to have a plenty of jobs in the market for uh, they want resources to handle uh, this SAP thing for implementing the project. They need resource to support that project. They need the resources. So because of which we have plenty of jobs available in the market for SAP consulting. Uh, even in the current situation, if you see in the COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, still we have, if you search SAP jobs compared to other field, uh, in, we have openings available for SAP. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so talking about freshers, uh, it's, it might be uh, relatively less, but uh, for experienced guys, minimum two years, if you say talk about two years of experience, minimum two years experience candidate. Yeah, 
we have a lot of opportunities available in the SAP job market. Now, talking about evolution of SAP, how SAP evolved. Okay, so it all started in the year 1972, uh, okay, with by five IBM engineers. Uh, so they were working on a company called IBM, okay, and this IBM had a, a soft, software called SAPE. The name of the software was SAP, okay, and uh, they had acquired, IBM has acquired this SAP software from Xerox company in the year 1972, they acquired it, and this IBM five IBM engineers were deputed to work on that. So after a few after working on that, uh, IBM abolished this project, and these five IBM engineers were told to move on to some other project. So now these people have worked on this uh, ERP system, and they were confident about this uh, uh, scope of the system. Okay, so they left the IBM company and they took over this same product and they evolved it, customized it, and enhanced the product, and they came up with a new company uh, called SAP. And it was uh, it was launched in the year 1972 by five, these five, MB, five IBM engineers in Waldorf, Germany. Okay, and uh, initially it was called SAP R1 version. It was the first generation of R SAP. It was not very popular because it was just started, and uh, so they started working on it. And in the year 1979, they came up with a new system called SAP R2. Now here it's a second generation of SAP and R signifies is the real time. Okay, R means it's a real time system. Data is available in a real time basis. Okay, and uh, when it was launched in the 1972, uh, 79, at that time the mainframe was the technology which was available and only big companies were using the mainframe technology. And and these big companies started implementing the SAP R2 version. Now coming to in the year 1992 what happened there was a, there was a next technology shift which occurred and mainframe was replaced by personal computers personal computers came into picture and uh, not only big companies then medium sized companies small companies also started using personal computers for their daily business operations and they wanted a software you know, a system to handle their operations okay so sap was evolved enhanced and a new version was launched in the year 1992 which was called sap r3 version it's a third generation of SAP and it's a real time third generation. Now this also works on a three tier architecture. Okay, so what is three tier architecture? Over here in the three tier architecture, we have the first layer that is our application layer. Okay, which is our user interface. That is our first layer. Second layer is your uh, program. The application program wherein millions of lines of codes are written and they perform the processing of the data which is given via the user interface so you input the data over here it goes to the application layer program it will uh, process your data and in the third layer we have the database which will store the data which you have which is processed by the program okay so this is a three tier architecture and sap r3 used to work on the three tier architecture that is why it is also called three uh, it's a third generation and it's a three tier works on the three tier architecture now after that in the year 2004 there was a nest technology shift which occurred and your internet started spreading its wings web was the uh, common ground uh, biz, uh, common place to for the business to interact uh, do their processes and transactions okay and sap r3 version was not able to work on internet so what sap did they acquired a company called netweaver and via netweaver they were able to perform few of the processes and transactions on the net but uh, not all of them okay so but the ecc this erp system it was called sap erp or it is also called as ecc version which is erp central component okay now this uh, it was very robust system now coming to when it was launched in the year 2004 it had all the processes and it had become a number one uh, erp system in the market now what when we talk about erp the full form of erp is enterprise is enterprise resource planning we have a lot of erp uh, systems in the market uh, like we have sap is the number one is a in is a leader in the erp market then we have uh, oracle at the second level second number is the oracle apps then we have a uh, jda jd is their uh, people soft okay uh, salesforce so there are a lot of 
programs available, ERP systems available, but SAP occupies the market share, uh, highest market share of ERP system. Okay, it occupies almost 30% uh, of the ERP market share and it is the number one ERP system in the market. Now, it, why SAP was already number one position, why SAP came up with a new version was, which was called S4 HANA. Okay. There was a lot of issues uh, which SAP encountered uh, by the year after 2004 launching. Uh, SAP has a global support team which handles the support issues across the all the companies, whatever they have three, three and a half lakh to four lakh companies, their support issues which gets escalated to SAP global support team. And when they analyze the call log, they found out that almost 70% of the issues were reported because of the database. Only uh, 30 to 40% issues were due to the SAP core business processes or the core models and remaining were because of the database issues. Now this ERP system, R2, R3, ERP, all these were, uh, systems were database independent. They can work on any database, okay? They can work on the Oracle database, or we have Microsoft SQL Server database, okay? We have Sybase, DB2. So there are, there are a lot of databases available and uh, SAP was not database dependent. It can work on any database until the time of ERP system, till uh, ECC version. Now, but this, Database were not over, uh, they were of third party companies. It, was, it does not belong to SAP and the issues were which SAP analyzed were because of these databases. So SAP started developing their own database and they, uh, they came up with a new database which was called HANA database in the year 2011, okay? Only because uh, of this, so that they can handle this 70%, uh, 60 to 70% of issues, which were, they were not able to do much about it because the database was not, belongs to them okay so they came up with a new database in the year 2011 which was called hana database okay and now this ecc version was uh, coming to hana database it has a lot of features and com huge computing power available with them okay hana can process any data in a much uh, faster manner compared to other databases sap has done a standard survey and they found that suppose we have a customer table which is having two trillion records in it. Yeah, there are two trillion records in that uh, table and business wants to know who are my top five customers. Okay, so to fetch this kind of data from a normal Oracle or SQL Server database, it will take six hours to fetch the data. Okay, top five customers. Whereas your HANA database can fetch you the same data in six seconds yes you heard it right it's just six seconds so that kind of uh, difference is there in the performance and uh, efficiency of the database now why i say hana is able to do this kind of uh, uh, compute has a huge computing power because it's a in uh, it's a in memory database okay data resides in the ram okay so which you'll be seeing uh, in the training in detail how exactly the data resides in the ram because uh, uh, business data is so huge and how can it's able to manage to store the data in the RAM? And there are a lot of strategies aging data aging strategies compression technology and a lot of features because of which the data resides in the ram okay and uh, it's supposed massively parallel processing a lot of processing happens parallelly okay and then uh, there are a lot of other features which will be learning in detail so when business saw this that uh, hana database can uh, process the data just in six seconds, whereas others taking so much time. So they started migrating their database from Oracle SQL to HANA database. And when this happens, the ECC version, which is working on uh, Oracle SQL and migrates to uh, HANA database, it is called SAP Business Suit on HANA. Okay, so one second. Okay, so let no problem. So here, when this happens, it is called SAP Business Suit on HANA. It is nothing but your ECC version, which is working on the HANA database. Now, first we will talk about the ECC version, and then we will talk about HANA. Now, coming to ECC version. Uh,
Now SAP, as I told you, SAP old version is ECC, which is a ERP central component. Okay, it's a uh, full form is ERP central component, and uh, 6.0 was the version which was launched before HANA came into picture. And after that, there was a lot of enhancements. So EHP one is the enhancement package one till EHP two, EHP three, EHP four, and till EHP eight. SAP continued the ECC version. And after that, SAP came up with, came up with the SAP S4 HANA. Okay, so here we have a lot of versions. It was launched in the year 2015. So it is called 1503. Uh, in the month of March, it was launched. Okay, so it is called 1503. And then they came up with 16, uh, 1603, 17, 18, and 19. So the current is your latest version is 1909, which is launched in the month of September. 2019 okay so this is the latest version now sap has lot of modules in it okay when we talk about sap erp it comprises of lot of modules in it okay so it is not just one module now what is module basically when we talk about uh, any business organization we have various departments in the business organization we have finance department uh, okay purchasing uh, purchase department hr department sales and marketing department so various departments are, are there and sap has modules for each and every department of the organization so when we talk about finance they have the finance module sap has finance model fico then we uh, for purchase department they have mm module for sales department they have sd module okay then for uh, uh, if it's a manufacturing organization they have a pp production planning module okay and then we have a uh, P, uh, quality management model, PM, PS, plan, uh, project systems, plan maintenance. Okay, so these are the logistics model. Then we have HR, HCM models, and so on. Okay, so there are a lot of models available, and these models are called as functional models. These are the SAP functional models because they handle the business functions. Okay, apart from the functional models, SAP also has something called as technical models. So we have SAP technical models. which includes your uh, models like uh, ABAP, which is a pro programming language, SAP proprietary programming language used to do the coding and customization of various models. Okay, so we say that if in MM model, when we talk about MM model, we want to generate a, some new report. So how to generate that report? That can be done via ABAP, okay? So ABAP is a programming language which we can use to customize any transaction or crea uh, create a new transaction or customize any report or create a new report. And that kind of activities can be done even for integration of SAP with non SAP systems. We use the ABAP language. Then we have something called BASIS, which is a uh, which is a basically handling of your database. Okay, and HANA admin is there to handle the database, which is a new uh, version of BASIS, basically, you can say. And then we have a lot of analytical tools like BI, business intelligence, business warehouse models, B, uh, BO, bots, and so on. Okay, so these are the uh, strategic reporting and high-end reporting we use this business intelligence soft uh, models okay so for normal reporting we can use the uh, mm model has their own uh, standard reports available same way as dfi so every all the models have their own standard reports but if you want to go for strategic reporting which requires a lot of computing power a lot of visualizations and a lot of things then we can use this bi bw models okay so now here we are going to cover the mm model which is a part of your sap functional okay so now, what is MM model? Uh, now, when we talk about MM, it caters to the B2B scenario, okay, business to business. Okay, we have two types of scenario, business to business and business to consumer. So when as a as a single person, I go to any uh, market to bring any product, okay, so I am doing a business to consumer transaction, okay, where, wherein I go to a mall or I, I go to Amazon or Walmart or any Reliance store anywhere, I select a product and pay the products. It's simple. The process is very simple. But when you talk about business to business, uh, the process is same, but it's uh, in bulk. Okay, you, the procurement purchase is done in bulk. So when we talk about any, uh, we take an example of a co coffee shop. Okay, so in the coffee shop, uh, uh, they have a lot of uh, ingredients or uh, materials which are required to for coffee like they want coffee beans they want milk and other ingredients now to, uh, what happens in sap we can maintain the inventory of that and if the inventory is becomes 
goes below a particular point okay so there is something called uh, planning is done wherein uh, at any point of time the inventory is gone below we can automatically create a procurement proposal and uh, purchase that inventory and the replenishment happen okay so this kind of activities can be done in the sap ml which will be covering in detail okay so coming to yeah So here I was talking about SAP, uh, various models of SAP, and SAP is tightly integrated. It is. Uh, we have seen so many models, and all the models are integrated with each other. Okay, when we talk about SAP, MF, finance is the center component of SAP. Okay, all and all the data flows from the various other models into finance models. So when we do MM uh, transactions like your purchase order creation or uh, the GR and goods receive. So the data will flow from the uh, MM model into finance model, same way uh, in the sales model, whatever transactions we perform, data finally flows to finance model, PP model will flow finance model. So uh, finance is the central thing, without finance model, SAP will not work. And obviously for purchase, we require MM model, for sales, we require SD model and so on. Okay, so, and all the models are tightly integrated. So we'll be seeing how the integration, where, what are the various integration points of MM model with finance, what is the integration point of MM with SD model what are, and so on. Okay, MM how it is integrated with PP, how MM is include, in, integrated with QM model and uh, how it is implement, integrated with your project system. So it is tightly integrated and that is the only reason SAP is the number one ERP system in the ERP market. Because uh, if you compare other ERP systems, they have, uh, first of all, they don't have all the uh, processes, all the models. Secondly, it is not tightly integrated the way it is SAP is tightly integrated okay so that kind of because of which what happens we have the data is real time the single point of data entry is required once you uh, do any data entry one point it is available for all the models at centrally okay so there is no duplication of data there is no redundancy of data so this kind of uh, integration is available when we talk about sap okay and coming to features of sap it is one of the core models of sap as i told you and it handles it is a backbone of SAP logistics area. In SAP, we have uh, um, three, four areas. One is a logistics area, then we have financial area, and then we have uh, HR and other areas as well, like uh, reporting at only BRBW analytical tools. Okay, so logistics, uh, when you talk about logistics, SAP MM is the backbone of logistics, and uh, we have other models as well, like SD, uh, PP, QM, and PS. So these are other models which are periphery models of uh, logistics area whereas the sap mm is the backbone of it okay so what is the purpose of sap mm it as a process it will ensure that there is no shortage of material okay uh, right kind of material is available at the right time okay there should not be any shortage so that your if you have any customer requirement you can fulfill the customer requirement by uh, from the inventory we can pick it up and dispatch to the customer if you are a manufacturing organization the raw materials or uh, spare parts whatever it is required it should not be there should not be shortage so that your production should not affect okay it should not stop production should not stop that is the main purpose of sap mm and we talk about uh, uh, sap mm it is the aim is to accelerate the productivity and reduce the cost okay it handles the spend management of your organization okay at the same time it is quite versatile to accommodate the changes in which are occurring in any business environment okay so uh, it deals with the procurement processes which will be covering uh, i'll just show you there's something called org structure in sap ml okay it starts with the uh, group company which is your controlling area when we talk about uh, like for example we talk about reliance group so we can place the reliance group over here on the top and the reliance group has a lot of entities with uh, within that okay we have reliance retail reliance petroleum reliance geo so they are these are the various companies under the group company so uh, below the group company will be having the legal entities or of uh, that group company and then below that we have the purchase organization now this purchase organization is basically we can have two types of purchase organization we can have centralized purchase organization as well as decentralized purchase organization so what is the central purchase organization it will do basically uh, it will do the procurement for all the group companies so the centralized will be uh, sitting at the group head office 
and they will do the procurement for all the uh, companies under the group company okay so when, what happens because of which we do uh, purchase in bulk and we can negotiate in a better manner with the vendor with, to get a huge discounts okay so that kind of uh, thing can be done when you talk about centralized purchase organization we have something called as decentralized purchase organization wherein what happens uh, if it's a, big, a big organization uh, they have the head office at in us they have the manufacturing unit in the china so it doesn't make sense that you procure from sitting in the us okay you have to do the local purchase so what they will do they have a decentralized purchase organization wherein local uh, procurement will be handled locally and we can do the uh, dispatch or what you call basically maintain the inventory or do the manufacturing activities or service of the organization so this is a part of a decentralized organization and below that we have plants so in mm the two more, uh, main important org structure is plants and storage location so what is plant plant is basically anything uh, there are three types of plants if it's a manufacturing unit then uh, we, it can be created as a plant or if it's a uh, it's a distribution center means after uh, manufacturing whatever material is stored in a distrib uh, distribution center whether it's a warehouse or uh, it's an agency tra trading agency okay so that distribution center can also be treated as a plant and the third type of plant is a service industry so if, uh, the service branch office can be created as a plant or the service head office can be created as a plant below the plant we have something called storage locations so this storage location is a main fun, uh, concept is to store the material within the plant so manufacturing the plant will be huge okay so we know we need to know where exactly the material is lying in the particular plant so that can be done via storage location so we know how much quantity of the stock is lying and where exactly it is lying that can be identified via this storage location okay even uh, for if we take out the example of a retail industry the place where we go and buy the products uh, any store in the mall or wherever even that can be treated as a storage location so this is something called as org structure of sap mm so this is the uh, first thing step we have to define now this definition sap has something called standard uh, org structure but uh, when we implement the project there are various phases in the project okay when we talk about uh, sap implementation we can do via some methodology there's something called sap methodology and the, for s4 hana we have a new methodology which is called activate methodology okay so in various we have various phases in that uh, it starts with the planning phase okay then we have business blueprint phase then we have realization okay and then we have cutover strategy that is called final preparation and then we have go live and then we have uh, support okay, so these are the various phases of any project so when we talk about uh, planning phase okay so in the planning phase we will just uh, we will have lot of workshops with the business we'll have lot of meetings uh, and workshops conducted we will get the requirement we'll do the requirement elicitation requirement gathering from the business what uh, how many companies they have okay like this kind of uh, how many companies they are going to have in the sap how many whether the purchase organization will be centralized purchase organization or whether it will be a decentralized purchase organization how many plans they have and what kind of plans they have uh, how many storage locations they intend to have and how exactly they are linked to each other okay so one plant can be assigned to only one company code but uh, storage location can be assigned to multiple company codes this is this storage location to, can cater to this plant it can cater to this 2002 plant 003 plant so all these details has to be gathered uh, this requirement has to gather in a particular document and that document is called business blueprint okay so this blue it will be created after planning and getting the requirement will create a business blueprint document which will have all the details of the business requirement and then we will do the realization phase wherein we will be doing the customization okay the configuration which i told you the settings behind each and every processes so we will create in sap system we will create uh, uh, the company code we will create the purchase organization whether centralized or decentralized we'll create the plant uh, we'll create the storage location we'll link each other okay and then we will do the uh, customization of the purchasing transaction so this is called a realization and then after realization is done we have the final preparation wherein we'll be having the cutover strategy where uh, what happens over here is basically we do the data migration now uh, 
what kind of data we have to migrate it your any company which is implementing sap they, either they might be using the old old sap system and they plan to migrate to the new sap system that is from r3 tcc version or e3 to two sap s4 hana version okay so that is one way other way they are sometimes they are using non sap system whether they are using maybe they are using oracle labs or jd advice or people sort or they are using tally system or uh, it may happen that they are just using excel for your business operations and they now plan to implement sap system so data is already there in the old system also the data is there in the non sap system which they are using also data is there now this data has to be migrated to sap system when we implement sap there is no data it's completely blank system so what we do we migrate the data in the final preparation stage and then once the data migration is done will be doing the go live okay there will be some hypercare support and then after that we'll be having the amc with the business so these are the various phases which will be covering in the training how to uh, handle the various phases of the uh, uh, sap implementation okay and major part will be covered in the realization phase almost 80 percent of the project uh, duration is going in the realization phase when we talk about project duration sap projects goes from any anywhere from six months to one year okay so uh, out of which 80 percent of your duration will be taken care or taken by the realization phase okay so this will be covering in detail in the training what is realization so coming to here apart from our structure sap has something called as master data as well okay so uh, in a, any any sap system we have two types of data one is your master data and then we have the transaction data Okay, so when we talk about master data, we have various masters of in SAP system. We have Matil master, we have Venda master. Apart from that, we have other like info record and source list, which we'll be covering. Then we have transaction data in, in SAP. Now, what is transaction data in SAP MM? In SAP MM, when we talk about SAP MM, we have various transactions like purchase requisitions, purchase orders. Okay, then we have uh, contracts, we have quotations, request for quotations, then we have quotations. And then we have uh, inventory management. So these are part of your purchasing component. Okay, this belongs to purchasing. And then we have below the purchasing another component is inventory management. This is the second component of SAP MM, wherein we have transactions like goods receipt, goods issue, transfer postings, reservation, okay, and uh, cancellation of the document and so on. Okay, so we will be covering all this detail in detail. And then finally we have invoice. Okay, so I will just uh, log into the system and show you how exactly it works. When you uh, two ways to log into SAP system, either we'll be getting the server access via remote desktop, or you have to install SAP system locally and connect via GUI interface to the server. So right now I'm connecting to the remote desktop. Here, all these login credentials will be provided. It's a 24 by 7 server access provided to you. So this IP address and username password will be given. So you have to just go to start, run, and type MSTSC. If you are using uh, Windows operating system, if you are using iOS, then uh, there's another app you have to download for remote desktop connection. And then give the credentials and connect. click on connect. Okay, so this is your server which I have logged in. Uh, here we'll be having various icons. Uh, like uh, for SAP, we have the SAP graphical user interface. When we talk about S4 HANA, we have a new interface which is called Fiori. So that uh, have a separate demo for S4 HANA. If people who are interested to learn SAP S4 HANA, uh, we'll be having a separate uh, demo for that because S4 HANA, there are a lot of changes which have come up. 
there are almost 30 to 40 percent changes which additional things which have come up so it requires a separate demo so whoever is, is interested for s4 hana we can cover separate demo for that right now we'll cover the sap ecc version which is your graphical user interface so this is the icon which is available to so your double click on that icon here we'll be having various servers okay so in your live scenario we'll be having the production server then we have something called quality server and development server okay so what is this there are these three servers basically sap this is the landscape of sap okay so any organization we have three uh, sap has to have three landscape one is your development server then we have quality server and production server So development server is a server where actually consultant works they will do all the customization configuration as per the business blueprint okay the all this configuration will be handled over here and they will do the testing part and then what will after doing the configuration all the settings will be moved from development to quality server here in the quality server the, the business users or the business where we are implementing sap system they will come with you they will do the testing from their side and they will make sure that whatever the requirement is there whether it is fulfilled successfully or not all the requirements are met or not when all the requirement this is called uat okay in the quality server we perform the user acceptance test and if, if the requirement is fulfilled they will sign up the uat uat is passed and once that is done all the, the uh, configuration settings which we have we will be moved to production system and it is your sap project has gone like it is declared live and business can start using the system okay so this is the three landscape now for consultant we will be having the full authorization in development server you can open any transaction you can do any configuration settings so we'll be do, working on the development server production we have a limited access as per the role of the candidate whether when he's a buyer he'll be having transactions or relevant to the buying activities uh, his hod will having uh, transactions which are required for his approval of the purchase order or so on okay so based on the role which the uh, employee is performing we have a limited access to that in production server okay but in development as a consultant we'll be having the full access and this is your development server which we are working right now okay so here i'll be logging into the server uh, i have given the uh, uh, what do you call server login credentials and this is your sap login credentials this is this can be separate or it can be the same one which will be shared with you once we start the training so this is the home page of sap okay here if you see on the right hand side we have the here we can have a company logo and on the left hand side we have all the this is called sap easy access and we have the various models over here okay so uh, when you talk about logistics area i was talking about logistics area here we have, we have models like materials management which is the backbone of logistics area then we have sales and distribution production planning plant maintenance quality management okay so we'll talk about materials management when you expand this materials management we have various components of materials management like purchasing components then we have inventory management invoice component physical inventory valuation mrp okay so when we talk about purchasing we have components like purchase requisitions purchase order this is contract offering agreement means contracts quotations master data and environment okay and then in inventory management as i told you inventory management has a uh, yeah so this version actually uh, i have one uh, question from lali this version is sap s4 hana okay if uh, the server which i'm logged in into is the sap s4 hana if you want to know the version you can go to system go to status and we can see the product version over here okay so this is your sap hana version sap s4 hana 9299 this is the latest server which we are right now i'm working on okay so here coming back to this inventory management component we have various transactions okay like uh, goods movement material document reservation and so on we will be seeing in detail and these are part of all your transaction data now coming to master data as i told you master data comprises of your material master and vendor master now when to start the material master now sap has two kinds of approach for navigation when we talk about navigation we can navigate we can open any transaction via the command field which is a shortcut method or we can open a transaction via the easy access Okay, so if you see this is called as command field, we have these are the menu bars, 
okay uh, and this is your standard toolbar which is available you can log off from here you can search anything then we have this is the application toolbar which is called easy access and this is the sorry this is the title bar of the uh, application and this is the application toolbar and then below that we have the status bar in the status bar we have something you know, on the right hand side we have the information which server you have logged on into what is the user id who has logged on which program you are working on so all these details will be available in the system information and the left hand side is the system messages which will be seeing uh, basically it will throw a lot of messages when we perform a transaction like error messages or uh, warning messages so that will be available over here in this left hand side of the status bar so this command field is the shortcut to open any transaction so when i open material master and if i know the transaction code every transaction is assigned a transaction code in sap so for material master we have a transaction code called mm01 this is a transaction code to create a transaction uh, create a material master so when i open here it will tell me i want to create a material for which industry sector so if you see here there are industry sectors available uh, in uh, by provided by standard sap if you don't have this industry sector your industry is not available you can add your own industry sector as well via customization so we'll be seeing in detail how to customize this then we have some suppose i take a mechanical engineering then we have material type so what type of type of material it is your material can be a raw material your material can be a semi finished material it can be a finished material it can be a service material so we need to know what type of material we are going to create okay so this we this is your suppose roh is a standard raw material we can create our own material type as well as per the business requirement then press enter now if you see here we have various views in sap we have uh, three kinds of uh, segments in any master data one is a basic data then we have model specific data and then we have financial data so basic data is nothing but your data which is at client level so we have seen in the org structure uh, group companies there and then we have the uh, uh, this company code and plant and storage location so the group company and company code data will be residing in the basic data okay it will be common for all the companies over here when we talk about model specific data here we have purchasing data mm model we have purchasing data and the plant and storage location data so your plant whatever we have created and storage location we have created in the org structure that will be available over here and then we have accounting details which is basically valuation of your material what is the value of the material okay and uh, uh, whether it's a uh, what is the gl code okay so basically as i told you any data we perform it goes into uh, finance model so where exactly in the finance model you should hit what is the gl code of that finance model will be updated in this account details so we, apart from that there are a lot of other views available if you see there are so many views here because as material master is a common ma master data for all the models of sap irrespective of whether it's mm model sd pp qm finance everybody uses the material master okay so if you every model will have its own specific data so when i talk about mm we have purchasing details over here so when i click on okay continue i have to give the plant for which i am creating the material so i create suppose i choose ap01 plan okay so we can create our own plant suppose i give this is a raw material for my training purpose sap plant okay so then we have to give the base unit of measurement now what are the there are standard base unit of measurement available this is uh, basically your iso uh, unit of measurements which are available like what is the whether it's a kg it's a gram or box bag okay uh, carton uh, in days so these are various dimensions are there in the unit of measurement and accordingly we need to configure so there are some standard unit of measurements provided we can create our own unit of measurements as well based on the dimensions of the material suppose i take uh, so each is a single unit then we have material group is nothing but grouping of your material as per the characteristics of the material we group the material in a one particular group so we can give that and then we can go directly to the purchasing views and over here we can uh, we need to assign the purchase data okay so which will have basically purchasing value key like we want to uh, send a reminder to the vendor in how much time okay once after creating purchase order we can send a reminder for the uh, follow-up of the material uh, we want the first reminder in 10 days second one 20 days and so on so this kind of data can be input over here and next last is your accounting data here we need to give the details of the material like whether it's a standard price or it's a moving average price 
okay so moving average price will have weighted average formula cost and based on that uh, prices will be calculated standard price is a price which is fixed across all your uh, life cycle of the purchase organization so we suppose i give thousand okay and the valuation class as i told you uh, with gl code it will hit in the finance model so suppose 3000 is the for raw materials so i save this and just save it so we'll create a material code this is my material code which i have created just copy that now we need to what is the purpose of mm model we need to procure the materials for procuring the material we need to have a master data so i created the master data that is material now this material has to procure from which we need to ask, get the source of the material okay so that is nothing but vendor so for that we need to create a vendor master in the system now coming to vendor master in sap s this is sap s4 hana latest version here vendor master has been replaced by business partner that it's a new terminology it is called as business partner so we'll be seeing in detail how what is business partner and why sap came up with business partner approach uh, and we can create a business partner using the t code called bp okay so here we can create a business partner suppose i open an existing one so this is my business partner and i can give the address of the business, uh, vendor okay and uh, i can have the uh, bank details of that vendor all these details can be input in the business partner so we'll be seeing in detail how to configure the business partner and how to do the how to create a business partner as well in that uh, training so once we have the master data ready we can go ahead and create the purchase requisitions so if i'll show you one purchase requisitions like me 53 and it's a display now in sap any transaction has three kinds of tools one is to create two is to change and three is to display so me 51 is creation of purchase requisition and 52 n is to change the purchase requisition and 53 n is to display the purchase requisition so uh, i'll just open existing purchase requisition here is nothing but your if you see this is the purchase requisition screen i have to just give the material and the plant which i am procuring and how much quantity i am procuring so if i create a purchase requisition suppose why i may 51 n transaction i just give the material code which i have we can give any suppose for which plant i'm procuring suppose ap01 because i have not assigned a particular uh, some settings which should be done so this is a material suppose it can be alphanumeric material as well it's not necessarily that is to be numeric for which plant i'm procuring this is my plant how much quantity i want to procure suppose 100 quantity just that's it so three four fields are required now if you see there are so many fields over here okay there are a lot of tabs available a lot of fields available which will be seen in detail each and every field uh, data data will be seen in detail what exactly it is how how to customize that data in that field okay that can be seen in detail but mandatory fields are just material plant and quantity so these three fields once you input we can save the purchase requisition what is purchase requisition now this uh, purchase requisition is nothing but in, a, in any department they require a particular material or service so they intend the material so as a dip, uh, i'm working in a business organization i want some stationery so what i'll do i cannot uh, i have to raise a purchase requisition i have to raise a request for that material it will go to the purchasing department they will create a purchase order out of that and uh, send it to the vendor and vendor will supply you the material okay so this is basically called procure to pay cycle there's something called procure to pay cycle it starts with uh, p2p it is also called as p2p purchase to pay procure to pay it starts with purchase requisitions okay so i have shown you how to create a purchase requisition and purchase requisition can be manually created standalone purchase requisition or it can be auto generated now as i told you uh, sap is tightly integrated with other models so your purchase requisition can come from other models as well suppose we have a customer order uh, in the sd model okay and the inventory is not available for sd model to dispatch to customer so what they will do they will uh, send a request to the mm model mm model will create a purchase order uh, via pr so pr will be coming from sd model then it will be converted into purchase order and then we'll receive the material and send it back to the uh, sd model they will dispatch the material to the customer so that is one way uh, of uh, getting this uh, requirement another way is man, if it's a manufacturing organization they have a pp model wherein all the components which are required for a, a production of a material that will be 
stored in the bomb bill of material and that gets exploded and uh, what happens if the inventory is available we can directly use it in the manufacturing organization if it is not uh, available then that request will come in sap mm as a pr and that will be converted into po and then inventory will be available via vendor and send it to the pp model for production so pr can be standalone pr manual pr or it can come automatically from sd or pp model as a requirement so once the pr is received we have to convert that purchase requisition to purchase order okay we have to create a po so how to create a po this is the purchase order screen i'll show you one purchase order this is m23 and to display the pr po so here we have the vendor to whom we are ordering we have to give the header details like all details of the vendor of the uh, po like what is the company code for which we are procuring what is the purchase organization what is the purchasing group okay and when we give the reference of the pr automatically things get copied from the pr so that material will get copied from pr you don't have to input any other details so in the item level things get copied from the pr when we give the reference of the purchase requisition so quantity your material your uh, plant will details will get copied and then you just save it now if there are any taxes are required that needs to be attached in the po whether gst is there or if there are any freight conditions for transportation is required fetch all the landed cost freight conditions transfer uh, discounts if the vendor is giving discounts so all these con details can be filled, filled in over here okay and so we'll be having the big gross price which is basically quantity into value of the material that will be the gross price then we'll add all the landed cost in it and deduct the discounts and we'll arrive at the net po value this is a net po value and it can have in multiple currencies okay so this is your purchase order once the po is created it will go for approval okay if you release strategy is applicable it will go to approval based on various levels now we can say that uh, one to uh, uh, ten, up to 10 lakh po your head of department can approve about the 10 lakhs 10 to 20 lakhs your uh, vice president has to approve okay uh, 20 to 30 lakhs it has to go to cfo and then ceo and so on so as per the business requirement you can configure the uh, approval process into sap so once the po is ready we have to do the goods receipt grn okay so in the grn we give how much quantity we have to receive so that is via the t, t code migo mig here we give how much quantity with reference to purchase order so we create a goods receipt with reference to purchase order with the po number and how much you, uh, quantity and now this po is already created uh, grn is done okay so here we give the quantity how much you want uh, we have received from the vendor and now here we have we have various options we can receive the material in unrestricted stock type if there is no issue or we can go uh, once the material is received, received we can go to quality check there will be quality inspection once the quality is passed then only we can use that material so it will go to quality inspection stock if there is any damage of the material it will can move that material to the block stock so there are various scenarios available in the grn as well and there are a lot of movement types any material in sap mm material will never stay at one place it will keep on moving and every movement is tracked via movement type so we have 101 as the standard movement type to receive the material okay and if you are receiving in a block stock it we have 103 if you are doing the returning to vendor we have various uh, movement types okay so if you see them 338 movement types standard movement types available in sap system to track the movement of the material even in the, the material is in the warehouse it will never stay in the warehouse at one place okay it will go to packing area uh, labeling area will put attach some barcode to it okay will be staging at area unloading unloading okay yard area and lot of areas are there so to track the quantity and the uh, position of that material we have various movement types so we'll be seeing in detail how to do that in the training so once the grn is done obviously next is vendor will once the vendor is supply the material he will give you an invoice copy and we have to pay the do the payment to the vendor via transaction myro that is called invoice okay so in invoice we have there's a transaction myro miro here we just give the reference of the PO for which company we are doing give the company code and the PO number and the amount which we have and then post the part invoice okay and the payment will be released to the vendor via finance model now from here it will go to finance model finance will take it over and the pay, actual payment will happen here we are just booking the invoice we are not making the payment in uh, MIRO transaction and actual payment will happen from the finance model to the bank account okay so in SAP MM, in when we do booking, that time we have something called three-way match. Okay, when we do invoice, there is a three-way match which happens. 
what is theory match here the uh, price will be picked up from the po in the invoice and your quantity will be picked up from the grn okay so what how much uh, price is there whatever we have agreed mutually between the vendor and the business that price has to be there in the invoice that should, in, uh, value of the material should not be differing in the invoice and obviously quantity whatever quantity he has supplied to that much quantity only he should build for if he is billing for more than that uh, supplied quantity that uh, system will not allow you to go book the invoice so that is second match and third match is your duplication of invoice suppose there is a, already we have booked the invoice we try to book the invoice second time again it will not allow so there is a three way match which is there so this uh, scenario is called procure to pay scenario okay which will be covering how to handle the procure to pay scenario in the sap system I was talking about something called customization. Now this is easy access wherein we can perform all the various transactions. Now there is something one T code called SPRO. This is a T code which is used by all the models of SAP for doing the configuration. Once I enter inside that, I'll click on reference ing, and here we have configurations uh, which I was talking about settings for every transaction. So for MM we have materials management. We we'll expand this node in that in the purchasing. Now we can, here we can configure the master data, which are, we can create our own industry sector, we can create our own material types, we can create our own unit of measurements, okay? Your own uh, material group, all these details can be uh, created here in the material master configuration. When we talk about uh, purchase requisitions, here we have uh, something called document types. Even in purchase order, we have document types. So what is document type? There's, in SAP, we have, a, uh, if I open this uh, purchase uh, order, transaction on the top there is someone uh, field called document type okay so we basically we segregate the po based on the scenarios so we, uh, whether it's a standalone po or it's a um, import procurement you are doing import procurement we can have a separate series of po number okay so the import will segregate it in a separate series domestic purchase order will be uh, have a separate series of a purchase order then we have uh, something called subcontracting consignment okay these are the special procurements so every procurement scenario will have a separate series via the document type so we'll see how to configure the document types and assign the number ranges to that so all this will be done in the configuration and then something uh, as i told you in conditions we have discounts we can create our own condition type okay like freight condition discount condition any surcharges taxes all this can be created via the condition uh, done in the configuration over here in the condition if you see here there's something called conditions under purchasing okay so here we can do that now, apart from that i was talking about below between pr and po there's something called quotation rfp in procure to pay cycle itself we have something called quotation so what is rfp uh, once you have received the requirement from the department whether it's a via sd module or pp module or any manual pr has been come up in purchase department they will raise a request for quotation means this uh, there has will create a quotation for that to and uh, send it to the vendors the minimum two quotations will be uh, coming up from various vendors and then we will uh, once the quotation is supplied and then we will doing the comparison that is uh, we'll get the price for the particular material we mentioned the specifications of the material over here in the rfq and then when once the vendor will supply you the quote we will maintain the quotation whatever price he has given and in sap we have a lot of criteria to evaluate the vendor like uh, what is the price what is the delivery performance what is the quality of the material what is kind of service is providing how much quantity he can deliver where exactly he can deliver uh, on time or not what is the so all these parameters and criteria can be used to evaluate the vendor once the vendor is evaluated sap will give him a score and rankings and based on that we can choose one of the best vendors who can give value for money and once the vendor is chosen we can have a contract as well in between so what is contract we can directly go for po or but if it's a long-term agreement we want to procure a lot of um, uh, data a lot of material okay then we can have a contract which is a mutual agreement with between the business and this vendor okay so we can have a like one year contract two years contract and saying that okay we want uh, one crore rupees of purchase so till that time one crore rupees has been uh, vendor has supplied with their material service the contract will be hold valid once the one crore is exhausted, contract will expire. Okay, so and uh, there's something called this is a value contract. There's something called quantity contract. We say that okay, we want ten thousand quantity unless until all the ten thousand quantity has been supplied by the vendor, it will be hold true. Once uh, all this quantity has been supplied, the contract will expire. 
okay so when we create the per, uh, benefit of contract is it will safeguard you from the price escalations okay so any fluctuations anything happens so uh, whatever mutually agreed terms and conditions will be mentioned over here and whatever price has been mutually agreed that will be holding true till the life cycle of the uh, this procurative cycle till the invoicing the same price will be applicable to the, even if the market goes up and down okay so this is contract and so this all these these things is a part of your procure to pay cycle so then i will just uh, show you the training contents so here we'll be having the introduction we'll start with the introduction to erp then we'll have a, a little bit about mm introduction sorry sip introduction of all the models then mm function objectives procurement proposals then we'll talk about navigation how it's to navigate into sap then we have something called organization structure which i was talking about how to uh, we can create our own company code our own plant storage location purchase organization purchase group then we'll be creating a master data okay your own material types that is raw material material groups and so on then we can create a vendor master there is another kind of master data like purchase info records source determination so which will be seeing in detail what is that then we'll be covering about purchase requisitions uh, and the settings configuration required behind it so we can get our own document type our own number ranges and a lot of other settings are there then we can talk about quotations how to configure the quotation okay and uh, how to handle the price comparison by having various criteria in the quotation okay and uh, vendor selection then we have purchase order how to configure purchase order then outline agreement which is the thing contracts and then we'll talk about inventory management which is includes your goods receipts goods issue stock transfer what is stock transfer suppose we uh, any uh, there are two plants okay and the uh, one plant requires some material there's a shortage of material so instead of uh, getting it from external vendor we if the material is available in my first plant we can directly transfer from the one plant to another plant so that can be called stock transfer one plant to another plant or from one storage location to another storage location so there are a lot of combinations available which will be seen then reservation is like uh, we are reserving a material okay so that can will be seeing detail consignment and uh, physical inventory uh, is basically stock taking of inventory okay and then we have pricing procedure will be seen in detail what is pricing procedure basically we can create our own discount conditions trade conditions such as conditions then we will talk about service management this is basically for the service industry uh, we can create a service PO and service entry sheet, which is a what you call equivalent of GRN. We talk about material purchase. Then we have inventory management configurations, how to configure your own movement types. Okay, SAP has already provided so many standard movement types. If you want, you can create our own movement types. How to uh, configure the, uh, how to do transfer postings from one step, two step, three step processes. Okay, and then we'll be configuring the uh, master data and the integration point as well okay so here we have uh, how mm is integrated with the finance module via automatic account determination how mm is integrated with sd pp qm and so on so we'll be seeing the integration points of mm with other models and after this we'll be covering now here after every unit i'll be giving you assignments to work on practice on the server and at the end of the train we'll be having a project which will give you full life cycle how from end starting to end how the project works using the SAP methodology or the activate methodology okay and then uh, after this we'll be having a if uh, anybody is interested to go for certification which is sap globalized certification i can give you certification guidance as well okay and then uh, we can even have a job placement assistance wherein i can update your resume as per sap points we'll add uh, i'll give you sap points to add up in your own resume and uh, uh, we'll have a mock interviews conducted okay uh, standard question and answers i'll be sharing with you interview question and answers so this way i can assist you in the job placements as well so that's it from my side uh, this is uh, any questions if you have you can ask me uh, uh, just unmute yourself one by one and you can ask me any clarification if you require any doubts any questions anyone is having unmute yourself and you can ask one. hello uh, am i audible hello yes yes uh yeah yeah, yeah hi actually i have a question like you talked about 
the live uh, project right at the end we'll have some mini project and all yes. and all the things that will be covered as per as per mm aspect or that will be like uh, the connection between sd and some sd will be included or something like that like no, what project, will be included in project like can you like elaborate a bit we'll get some idea like yeah yeah so actually there's something called as a configuration document as well so i'll be sharing with you the configuration document okay so i'll show you um, it's a step by step guide to configuration which is nothing but spr or configuration which i was showing you so you have to refer this document and we'll be doing the configuration Okay, so it's almost 100 page of document and uh, this is nothing but a part of your project so we'll be uh, we'll be handling how creating the org structure then we'll be doing the assignment of org structure we'll be configuring the master data how to uh, configure master data we'll be configuring the purchase scenarios okay and uh, uh, services scenarios multi management so all this will be part of your project which we are anyways covering this uh, after every unit but when we talk about project it will give you full end to end scenario okay from starting to end we will be doing it and uh, i'll be reviewing your project uh, how exactly if any issues are there so you, you get a complete picture of that and when we're talking about integration that's a separate uh, topic altogether okay integration is uh, integration of mm model with other models how it is integrated with that so there are some other configurations which are required which will also be part of a project so what uh, in mm we have something called automatic account determination okay so in finance module what they do they create a various gl codes general ledgers and that gl code will be provided by the finance consultant to mm consultant and he will include that in the uh, in our purchasing transactions so there is something called as a uh, when we do grn that is the first time when the accounting entries are getting created okay so there is something called debit and credit entries how exactly which gl code should be hit during debit entry uh, which gl code should be hit during the uh, credit entry moment your stock is received inventory will increase and where exactly it should go so all these settings are required we'll be seeing in detail how mm and hd is integrated via that uh, uh, stock transport order okay how mmpp is integrated via mrp planning activities which i have talked about your pr can come from sd model or pp model how it is happening that integration will be seen plan maintenance will see ps model quality management so all this is a part of integration uh, okay so project is separate which will be doing it via this uh, document and the integration is separate we'll be sharing with you the certification dump as well and uh, which you can refer and go ahead for your certification uh, any other questions? Uh, uh, is that clear your uh, question? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, thanks. And one more thing, like after uh, like uh, going through this course, like after completing with the project uh, and each and everything, what uh, like if I am applying for the interview and what hmm. for what experience can I show? Like it will be one year uh, re relevant to one year experience, one and a half or what? Can you like? Yeah. so we're not we're not talking about uh, your uh, placement assistance so you already ha might be having a resume uh, with some experience in that so what we can uh, we'll be adding some few points that uh, in your organization you are working as an end user uh, working on sap uh, or and you have a because the kind of knowledge will be i'm being but imparting to you you'll get the confidence to, to track the interview but uh, when it comes to verification that part has to be handled separately okay so when if the company verifies that whether you are really working on sap in your organization that has to be taken care by your hr okay so that uh, okay. so we can add the things in the resume but uh, you should be able to justify that uh yeah sorry uh, sorry for asking one more question like uh, yes. if i say like uh, that can be handled the hr query that can be handled from my side so okay. for like how much uh, like for which uh, post can i apply like for one year experience two years three like yes so uh, that's sap different. sap job market is like uh, we have something called project as i told you and uh, yeah. we have consultants we have two kinds of project one is a sap implementation project mm -hmm. then we have a uh, something called it uh, upgradation projects so uh, then we have integration projects 
okay and then rollout projects which are mini uh, implementation you can talk about then we have a support project okay so for every kind of activity we have uh, resource required okay so as a fresher junior uh, consultant or consultant you will uh, it's difficult to get a project implementation project you can easily get into support project as a associate consultant or junior consultant you can say if you are fresher if you have a domain expertise then that go, domain gets counted as a experience and then you can go get into this kind of things implementation upgradation integration and rollout okay and uh, we'll be stop covering everything how to implement project via that configuration and project and uh, this will cover all these aspects and support is basically if any issues are encountered after project is gone live uh, they might be the users might be encountering a lot of errors issues and uh, understanding problems so that will be handled via the support consultant so initially if you are fresher just a college pass out you can get into support activity for one two years and uh, if you are able to get into implementation is uh, from your organization on the job uh, training you can uh, it's good otherwise after that once you get one year of support experience you can directly jump in uh, because uh, in the job market uh, when we go into job market like for your consultant level they say ask for at least one you might have done one and to end project one and to end project if you have done implementation or upgradation integration rollout project then you have a huge scope okay so it's just like any field then any fresher initially they have uh, they have to uh, there will be struggle initially but then uh, compared to other fields the scope is huge if you get one two years of experience into sap market you will get a lot of opportunities going forward and other thing is which i was talking about sap s4 hana uh, there are some three lakhs to uh, almost four lakh of customers as of 2020 now four lakh companies have implemented sap okay four lakh companies have implemented sap are using sap now they are using the older version of sap okay out of which only 25 percent have migrated to SAP S4 HANA. Okay, we have migrated to SAP S4 HANA, which is the latest version of SAP. Now SAP is going to stop from 2025. First, they have given the deadline that the older uh, SAP is going to uh, stop the support of the older versions. Okay, that has gone extended till 2028. I think I'm not sure, but 20, 2025 was the initial deadline. Uh, after this company has to compulsory migrate to SAP S4 HANA with after uh, because then SAP will not support the older versions okay so they don't have any options though this 75 person who have not migrated they have they are going to migrate by 2025 so when these companies migrate almost uh, three th three lakh companies which are uh, migrating from older version to new version there are a lot of projects which are going to come up in the job market okay. so and for that they require consultants uh, junior support consultants junior consultants, senior consultants, and so on, okay? So there's a huge scope which is there, and this is the right time. You have a, this, if you see current situation, uh, you have a time, you can utilize that time to learn the latest version or the ECC version also, we have, uh, the other 75 companies have implemented. So there is a job market for ECC version as well. 75% companies, uh, like almost three lakh companies have uh, using SAP. So that also job market is there. If you go for latest version also, there's a good thing to do that. So huge scope is available if you take a, a decision right now to enroll uh, it's a duration of the course which i wanted to tell you duration of the course is for ecc version the duration is 45 hours 45 to 50 hours of training is required okay and uh, for s4 hana it will be almost 60 hours okay. for s4 hana will be covering 60 hours of training 60 to 65 hours of training and uh, this will be covered in 200 to uh, covered in 2.5 months of time for s4 hana it will take three months uh, for ecc will be covering in 2.5 months so we'll be like every week we'll be having five hours of session so if it is weekdays or weekends based on the uh, convenient of the trainer and the training we can uh, schedule the batches okay so it will be like a weekend session we'll be having two and two and a half hour session daily Saturday and Sunday, so which covers five hours. If we talk about Monday, weekday batch, Monday to Friday, we can have one hour session daily. So again, it will be covering five hours. Okay, so that will be able to cover the training complete curriculum in uh, 2.5 months of time. Okay, any other questions? Anybody is having? 
uh, fine then i'll uh, wind up the demo and uh, then uh, we'll get back to you regarding the enrollment part if anybody is interested to enroll. thank you so much everybody have a great day bye take care